For quite a while, ship-to-ship -ship bounty hunting has been one of the fastest and most effective ways to earn credits in Star Citizen. I was one of the original backers, but backed out of the game myself for several years, and focused on Elite Dangerous and flight sims like DCS until Star Citizen became more playable. But it's in a much better place these days, and when I got back into it, I wasn't going to spend any more money on backing, I only bought a low-end package way back when it first started. Enough to get a Constellation Taurus, which is a good, versatile, money-making ship. And the Taurus was also much less expensive back then, but I'm not going to spend any more money on Star Citizen as much as I like it. But I got back into Star Citizen right after the 3.16 patch, and I needed to upgrade to the Andromeda for Cerulean's War, and I was pretty taken with the MSR. So I got right into ship-to-ship -ship bounty hunting to make some credits. Now there are a few really good ships out there for bounty hunting, and the Vanguard is definitely one of my favorites. Doesn't matter all that much which Vanguard. Right now, as things stand in the current patch, they're all in a pretty good place, especially the Sentinel and the Vanguard Warden, as among the various Vanguard builds, they are the most maneuverable. However, among all the Vanguards, I would strongly recommend getting the Sentinel, simply on the basis it's the most cost effective. The Vanguard Warden's about 3.5 million, because it comes with military components and the very potent MVSA laser cannons. But the military components are not A-spec. And if you really want to get the best you can out of the ship, you're going to want all military A-spec components. So you're going to end up changing those out anyway. And as far as the MVSA cannons, there is one place in the game you can buy them, down at Cousin Crow's parts shop on Horizon. Or Orison, or however the hell you want to pronounce it. So you can pick up a Sentinel for about 2 million UEC, and then I suggest swapping out all the components for the following. Two size 2 FR-76 shield generators, which will set you back 38,250 credits each. Two JS-400 military power plants, which cost 53,150 each. Two size 2 avalanche coolers, which will cost you 58,100 each. And a size 2 XL-1 quantum drive, which will set you back 94,900 credits. Sometimes people complain about the amount of fuel the XL1s use, but they're fast as hell. And the Vanguards carry enough quantanium fuel that you can jet around one side of the star system to the other without fear of running out of fuel. And then you're going to modify the weapons. I usually hunt solo in this ship, and it is an extremely good solo hunter. But if you do put a gunner in your turret, leave the sucker punches in there. They're really good at peeling away an enemy ship's shielding. Though, if you use my build, you're going to see it's hardly necessary. Pop down to Cousin Crows and get four of the MVSA cannons that are specific to the Vanguards. Naturally, you don't have to do this if you already got the Vanguard Warden, it's going to have MVSAs. And then remove the size 5 turrets and whatever weapon came attached to it and junk it, and pick up a size 5 deadbolt cannon. I stumbled upon this combination a little while back, and as you're about to see, it is wicked. I wouldn't use any of this build in PvP bounty hunting, actual player characters are just too nimble. But against any AI-driven NPCs, it's hard to get better than this. So this bounty is going to be an atmosphere. And since, when I'm hunting ship-to-ship -ship bounties, I'm usually just grinding credits. I'm going to get down there fast and take that guy out quick. Which vanguards are really, really good at. Anybody used to flight sims watching me fly this vanguard is going to note, I'm sure, right away that I handle the ship a lot more like an air fighter than a spaceship. I fly drones professionally, and do a lot of flight sims like DCS and MFSF, so that's why. Truth be told, I find Star Citizen's flight model to be almost childishly simple. Same with its combat model, but it is what it is and it's easy to take advantage of. Set your decoys to drop three at a time. This might seem at first to be a waste, but it'll pretty much pull the missiles off of you the first time every time. And going hot and fast, especially in an open atmosphere area like this, until you're about 10 kilometers away, then slow to about 400 kilometers an hour. That's about the max speed that the fighter builds handle really well in. If the target starts to rabbit, lock them with missiles, and that'll usually aggro them enough to turn them around and make them come at you. Of course, it's not a problem here. As soon as I got close enough to this warden, I started shooting with both MVSAs and deadbolts. First pass took out his shields and did some hull damage. I hit space brace, came to a stop and turn around, and before he could even rebuild shields, just hit him a few more times with MVSAs and deadbolts. And that's an almost instant kill. If you're in good with the local planetary systems bounty hunter guild, and you remember to also take the call to arms mercenary mission, that one quick kill, which took maybe five minutes, including travel time, 
netted me around 25,000. You can rinse and repeat this roughly every four to five minutes and make six to 700K per hour and have a little fun getting some combat practice while racking up credits real quick for whatever ship or whatever else it is that you want to get. So I've just picked up another mission and we're going to go and do it again. These are very high risk target missions, by the way. I used to shoot the MVSAs first until I peeled off the enemy's shields and then started cutting loose with the dead bulls. But I find that for whatever reason, they really work best together. So now I just start shooting both at the same time. It seems that in game dynamics, the MVSA laser cannons disrupt the enemy's shields enough to let the dead bolts pass through. You're gonna see something similar again. We are going to take out this next guy so quick, it'll make your head spin. So this is an asteroid field. I'm not gonna go blazing it at max speed this time. I'm gonna keep my maximum speed down to about 600 knots or lower. That way on the off chance an asteroid does spawn right in front of me, I have a little time to maneuver around it. Rarely ever happens these days. Star Citizen's gotten better about that, but you never know. The bad guys usually spawn in somewhere between 25 and 20 clicks. And when they do, you want to make sure one is centered by that blue diamond shaped icon. If not, and you destroy the bad guys, chances are you won't get paid for your work. So if there's not a bad guy that's surrounded by the blue diamond shaped icon, just slow down. If one is not centered in the icon at around 20 clicks, I'll slow down to three or 400 knots to give some time for the enemy and the icon to sync up. You'll know when it happens, the icon will disappear and move to perfectly surround one of the enemies. And when that happens, just lock that enemy and continue to close. Don't lose your cool, don't go rushing in. The vanguards are very tanky fighters. Not the fastest or most maneuverable, but as you're about to see, they don't need to be, especially in an asteroid field like this. What I'll typically do is close in to about 3,000 meters and start shooting, as soon as the shoot icon turns green, and decrease my speed to only 100 or so. This is enough to confuse most of their buddies' fire, but as you can see, it rarely ever matters because the vanguards, with four MVSAs shooting dead bolts at the same time, well, they kill almost instantly. That was a Valkyrie, not the hardest hitting ship, but a pretty tough one, and it went down in seconds. Now, the last few minutes I've already made 50k, but let's rinse and repeat and do it again. A little tip, if you're really looking to grind credits fast, don't stick around and kill his friends, even if you took the Occult to Arms mission, which gives you bonuses for every bad guy that you killed because they're just not worth it in the time that it takes to get them and they're not worth the expenditure of the ammo. Just move on to the next bounty. All right, while well, we close the difference on this guy, I'll just take a moment and go over setups. Because I do a lot of flight sims, I don't use a HOSIS, a dual joystick kind of setup. I prefer a traditional HOTIS. So I'm just using the Thrustmaster Warthog HOTUS, which I got at an incredible deal a couple years ago. Amazon had mistakenly listed one at the wholesale price and I bought it and they honored the sale. Which, thank you Amazon, but they promptly put the price back to normal. I live in Canada, normal's pretty high up here. But I've been very happy with the Thrustmaster HOTUS. It's very smooth and accurate. And Thrustmaster's gotten better at making the bases. I don't get the stiction issues people used to talk about. The mini stick on the Thrustmaster Warthog throttle though is complete garbage. And I replaced it with a Delta Sim mini stick. If you have a Thrustmaster Warthog throttle and you've been struggling with that crappy mini stick, take a look at the Delta Sim mod. It's pretty well respected in the flight sim community. I'm also using rudder pedals. I know some people say you can't be accurate with rudder pedals. To those people, I just want to remind you that actual fighter pilots use rudder pedals. You can be plenty accurate with rudder pedals. It just takes practice and a good set of pedals. I'm using the Thrustmaster TBRs, which I also bought when Amazon made a mistake. And when they first brought them into Canada, they listed them at wholesale and I snapped up a set then too. And Amazon once again honored the pricing error. All right, this is just an Anvil Hurricane. And while they're nimble and fairly tough in their own right, as you're about to see, they won't hold up to this weapon's combination. In the first pass, we've already stripped away his shields and done some significant hull damage. And in a few more seconds, he's down for the count. I've actually done a couple of battles that I haven't shown in this video also, and we still have 46 deadbolts left. Plenty of ammo to grind plenty more credits. So let's go do it again. I find I can usually get five or six kills before I have to pop back over to Port Olisar to rearm. And if the ship hasn't taken much damage, I might even do two or three more kills just using the MVSAs. They're just that good. It takes a bit longer to make your kills and you take a few more hits, but it's just a fast way to grind credits. 
I'm really looking to grind credits fast. Around the time I start using the MVSAs, that's when I'll start slinging missiles at targets too to soften up their shields before I actually get close and engage the enemy. One or two missile strikes is usually enough. All right, this is going to be our last battle and it's going to be in the atmosphere of this planet. The biggest thing to remember about atmospheric battles is you gotta watch out for the ground. If you use the space sims, that might be harder to remember. If you're coming from flight sims, that's just gonna be par for the course. And to find atmospheric battles can actually work in favor of a heavy fighter like the Vanguard because it really inclines you to slow down. In fact, typically what I'll do is I'll dive down to about level with the enemy, start shooting them as soon as I'm in range and throttle back to nothing. Then I just pivot around after they pass me and shoot them again a few more times and that's typically enough to blow them up, point up into the sky, max the throttle and hit the booster and I'm out out and away from the fire of any of his friends in no time. Now he's sunward of me so this time I'm going to approach him a few degrees off center and pull toward him just before I start shooting and that'll get the sun right out of my face. I don't think in Star Citizen the sun can really pull away infrared missiles like it can actual fighter missiles here in modern Earth. But the sun does make it harder to visually see and track your opponent, especially if you're using a bright screen like I am, and you just want to get that glare out of your face. Alright, now he's far enough to the side that the sun is not pointing right at us and we're going to pull in toward him. And I see he's a hurricane. A lot of times people are kind of intimidated by the hurricanes, they're pretty fast and they can hit pretty hard while they're evading you. But the trick is just let their own speed and tactic work against them. You do have to chase them a little bit though, they, uh, the AI will often have them run away while their friends try to hit you. And if you just stop, they'll pull away and just leave you to fight their AI friends for a while. As you pursue them, keep your speed a little above theirs and they'll soon turn around and come back. But if they're still inclined to run, just missile lock them. You don't even have to shoot the missile. That's usually enough to get them to turn around. All right, so with a few hits from the MVSA and the dead bolts, we've peeled away his shields and done some substantial internal damage already. Now we're just gonna come to a dead stop and let ourselves pivot to maximize our turn rate. And now he's well lined up and a couple more hits from the dead bolt finishes him off. Once again, a Vanguard with four MVSA laser cannons and a size 5 deadbolt is a lethal combination that's going to kill anything you're going to find up to very high risk targets very quickly. Using this combination, I can usually pull in in about 20 to 30 minutes, two to 300,000 credits before I have to go and reload. Now, I know some players say they don't like ballistic weapons, they like energy weapons because they have infinite ammo, but the fact of the matter is you're going to have to stop at a space station in about that amount of time anyway to, uh, if nothing else, reload your chaff and flares. Now, I find that on average you actually make more credits more quickly by using a ballistic weapon in combination with energy weapons and knowing when to use which than by just trying to slowly pare down your opponent with nothing but energy weapons. So I'm going to do some more hunting. I've still got plenty of ammo left and the ship's in plenty good shape. And that's about it on the Vanguard meta. You can make this meta with the Vanguard Warden, Sentinel, or Harbinger, but you're going to get a bit more maneuverability with the Sentinel and Warden. In fact, the Sentinel is the lightest and the most maneuverable. That's why I picked it. Plus, the Sentinel only costs 2 million, while the Warden is almost 3.5 million. I think it's around 3.4 million. And since with either one, you're going to need to upgrade all of the components, except for the MVSAs, the Warden already has the MVSAs, you'll need to upgrade them on the Sentinel. In my opinion, you're just coming out with a much better deal on the Sentinel. It's a much better bounty hunting ship. It's actually pretty good at hunting players too. You need a different weapons loadout, but it does pretty good. The thing is so tanky that when bounty hunting, you hardly have to bother to even evade. I mean, you don't want to just sit around and let the bad guys hit you, but you can take quite a few hits before the weapons start getting through to the hull. And the hull itself can take quite a few hits, so you can really focus your attention on getting your target of interest. Thanks for watching. There'll be plenty more coming on the Cerulean Skies channel, both on Star Citizen, as well as the DCS Flight Simulator and the Microsoft Flight Simulator. And we'll see, time will tell, maybe we'll add a few more to that. If you like what you see and you like taking part, I sure would appreciate it if you took a moment to like the video and subscribe.